Hey everyone, on this lecture we are going to work on calculating the average clustering on a graph. So inside the graph we can have two types of clustering. We can have local clustering and we can have uh, global clustering. These two are defined in different ways. Let's begin with the local clustering. We define the local clustering of each node in a given graph G as the fraction of triangles that actually exist over all possible triangles in its neighborhood. Therefore, the average clustering coefficient of a graph G is essentially the mean of all of the local clusterings. So if we want to compute by hand the local clustering, then for each vertex i, let's consider n sub i to be the number of neighbors of i. Let's also consider c sub i to be the fraction of pairs of neighbors that are connected with each other. And so the local clustering of this given node, of this given vertex i, is the number of connections between the node i neighbors, and we divide this by a half of the number of neighbors of this node i, multiplied by the number of neighbors minus 1. So once we have computed the local clustering of each node, we can compute the average as dividing by n, where n is the number of nodes that we have in our graph, the number of vertices in total that we have in the graph. So to visualize this definition of local clustering, in an easy way, we can see this with an example. Well, let's break down these calculations step by step. Let's begin with the computation of the local clustering for the vertex 1, for the node 1. So this is C1. So remember, okay, what we have. We have a fraction where the numerator is the number of connections between D node 1, in this case neighbors, so if we analyze this graph, the neighbors of 1 is 2 and 3. And how many connections are, then, are there between them? Well, only one connection, only this connection in here. So we have only one connection between the node 1 neighbors. And then what we have here on the denominator is a half of the number of neighbors of this node 1 multiplied by the number of neighbors minus 1. So we have a half... And then now we multiply this by the number of neighbors of 1, 1 and 2. So we have only two neighbors. Multiply by 2 minus 1, right? So what does this give us? As we can see, if we compute, this gives us... A, on the top, we have the same thing, 1. On the bottom, we have this. This gives us 1. 1 multiplied by 2 minus 1 is 1 multiplied by 1, which is 1. Right? So at the end, the local coefficient, the local clustering coefficient of the node 1 is 1. And this is precisely what we see here. And the same happens for the node 2. Okay, there is only one connection between the neighbors of 2. And if we apply the same, a half of the number of neighbors of 2, which is 2, multiplied by 2 minus 1, this gives us also 1. Let's now go to the node 3, which is a more interesting case. In the node 3, we can see we have uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4 uh, neighbor nodes. How many connections are there between them? Only one connection. Only one and two are connected, as we can see. There is only one connection between the neighbors of three. So on the denominator, we are going to have one. Okay, and here we apply the same thing. A half of the number of neighbors of three. We already saw that there are four neighbors. So here we have four. Multiply by four minus one, which gives us three. So this, if we simplify, gives us one divided by six. Now, if we analyze the case of the clustering, the local clustering coefficient for the nodes 4 and 5, what, what happens here? Well, as we can see, for the, for the node 4, for instance, it is the same approach for both. We see that in the node 4, we only have one neighbor, which is the node 3. And now, how many connections are between the neighbors of 4? This is the same question as asking, what are the connections between the node 3 and the node 3? Well, we can see in this graph that we have no cycles. There is no edge that comes from 3 and goes to 3. There is no a cycle here. So since there is no a cycle in here, the number of connections between the neighbors of 4 is 0. So since in the numerator is 0, okay, we really don't care about this. The local clustering is defined as 0. And the same goes for 5. And so now finally, how can we compute the average local clustering? Well, the average is just the mean of all of them. Since we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 nodes in total, 
we sum all of the local clustering for each node and we divide by 5. Note that for the case of 4 and 5, for these two nodes, the local clustering is 0, so we don't even need to include this in the total summation. So this gives us 13 divided by 30, which is approximately 0 0.43. So once we have understood uh, the local clustering, we can now proceed to use this same graph as an example and compute this local clustering in network X and verify that we have as a result this same 0 0.43. But before that, it is important also to bear in mind that there is another type of clustering in on graph theory, which is the global clustering network X that does not support and doesn't provide the function, okay, predefined function to compute the global clustering only the average local clustering. However, it is important also to know the existence of the global clustering. So we define a global clustering of a given graph. Now we are not computing for each node this clustering because it is a global clustering for all of the graph. So given a graph G, I can compute the global clustering as the fraction okay, between three multiplied by the number of triangles that we see in this graph. All this divided by the number of connected triples. Now, if we look at this uh, graph, how many triangles we see? Well, we see only one triangle. This one, one, two, three. Okay, this is the only triangle that we have. So, how many triples we see here? Well, we define a triple as three uh, nodes connected. Okay, uh, the layer can be and they can reach from one to another. So, there is a path between them. So, for instance, a possible connected triple could be one. 3, 5, this is one connected triple, right? Also 1, 3, 4, so we have 2, 4 now. 4, 3, 5, we also have another, okay? Also 2, 3, 4, right? 2, 3, 1 is also connected triple. 2, 3, 5, and also we have 2, 1, 4 as another connected triple. And the last one is this one in here, 2, 1, or this is the one that we already saw, 214. And the last one will be, for instance, 132. And notice here that the triple 123 and the triple 132 are different connected triples because the node in the middle is different. In fact, we define a triple as a node in the middle with two, uh, two adjacent nodes. So since here the node in the middle, the vertex in the middle is different, uh, they are different connected triples. So in total, we have eight. Okay. So if we have this computation, 3 multiplied the number of triangles, which is 1, divided by the number of connected triples, which is 8, this gives us this one. So it is important also to know how to calculate the global clustering. Although, once again, in Network X, we are only able to compute, using the Network X library functions, the average clustering from the local clustering coefficient. So let's do this with this given graph, and let's show that precisely this is the average local clustering. So let's open our notebook. Okay, let's here add a new text section to be the average clustering. Let's begin by creating the graph that we are given. This is something we already know. So let's define the graph G. First of all, we use the graph constructor. We now can add the edges in a format of a list. So here we add all of the edges of this graph. Before computing the average local clustering, we can draw this graph. So we also want to visualize the nodes. So with labels, we set this to be true. So now the nodes are named. Here, we need to close the last parenthesis like this. Uh, and also this. Okay, so now we run again. And now as we can see, uh, this is the graph that we're given. Okay. Notice also how with each execution that we run, uh, this drawing is going to change, right? But essentially, it is the graph that we have. It has the same set of nodes and also the same set of edges. So now let's compute the average local clustering coefficient. Let's define here the average clustering. This is going to be equal to the function average clustering. Here in this function, uh, network x, given a graph g, it computes the average clustering coefficient. The returning value of this function is a float value. So here we are going to have a float value. So now we can print the average clustering coefficient as here, average local clustering coefficient. And here we can just put this variable in here, right? We can just here copy this float value, this result of the average clustering. And now this uh, cell is going to print as the average clustering. 
So now let's verify that our calculations are correct. And let's indeed justify that this is the correct value. Of course, by definition, this justification is correct because if we here begin from the formula, we are applying the formalization and the formal definition of the local clustering. So this is already justified. So now let's empirically demonstrate that network X also computes the correct result, which is 0 0.43. So now we can run this cell. Okay, we can here run it. Very well. And as we can see, Okay, here we see the average local clustering coefficient for this graph is this one, the precisely the one that we have, 0 0.43 periodic, right? So as we can see, this is how we can compute the average clustering of a given graph. We can have any type of graph with any set of nodes and edges, and we can compute its average clustering coefficient. Notice also how the local clustering coefficient and the average clustering are primarily defined for undirected graphs. For directed graphs, there are multiple variations of clustering coefficients, such as the directly clustering coefficient and also the transitivity coefficient, which take into account the directed nature of the edges. However, in graph theory, mainly these local clustering coefficient and the average clustering coefficient are defined for undirected graphs. With this, we end this lecture on clustering, we remind the student that you can download all of this notebook as well as the documentation used on the downloadable documents of this lecture.